Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is CKT Chaotic. Today I will be reading Purple Hyacinth, episode 67 to 68. Due to Webtoon's new policy, I do have to blur 50% of each episode, so if you guys do want to read along with me, it is available on webtoons.com. And for anyone out there who's interested in my early access to all my content for the month of July, I do have a free trial going on for seven days that are for tier two and tier three, if that's something you guys are interested, where all my contents are uncensored, there's no logo blur, nothing like that. It is available on patreon.com. I'll drop the link in the description box below. Let's go ahead and get started. Purple Hyacinth. Episode 67. The music played right off the bat. I wonder if you guys can hear it. Hopefully, yeah. Oh, it's Will. How's it's work these days, son? Is your promotion treating you well? Yes, father. It's only been four months, but being lieutenant is an enjoyable challenge. Don't get complacent. You have to work and study harder if you want to be promoted to colonel. I haven't made so many efforts for you to stall in the position of lieutenant. Harsh. Make sure the mic is closer. Yes, father. Nothing less than expected from the son of the former chief of police and general of the royal army. But now that I'm fully retired, it is your duty to uphold the family name. The Hawks have always been held in high esteem by the royal family and the public. Yes, father. I am aware. Are you really? Must I remind you that you failed your lieutenant exam the first time around? I've always excelled. It was a one-time mistake. You may have made it this far because I've pushed you to the, in the back all these years. But you won't keep your position with half measures. To progress, you must redouble your efforts. You have been granted an amazing opportunity. You must find Lune, Lune to get promoted to Colin. Your discipline and the image you project must be beyond question. Everything counts. There's no time for any idiocies like your so-called friends. You've taught me to manage my time well. I am not wasting it. Befriend, befriending the Sinclair's daughter is a waste of time. She may be Tristan's niece, but she's a disgrace to the department and sullies your reputation by association. She been making amends for her mistake and everyone. I don't care what your precincts thinks of her. I have taught you principles and values, but you are responsible for your, all, your actions. After all, I know you won't disappoint me again. <sighs> yes, father. Enough about work. Did you consider about what we talked about last time? I have, yes. But I believe these things shouldn't be rushed. <laughs> Meeting new people is hardly rushing. You should really consider the Darcy's girl. She's your age, comes from a proper noble family. By all appearances, she's clever and poised. Mm. <clears throat> Still, nothing new from Mother's doctor? Actually, the doctor saw her today. Her condition has deteriorated again. He said she only has two or three months left. Huh? It's been years and yet still no explanation. She's being seen by the city's finest. It pains me more than I can say, but there's nothing we can do, son. I'm still not ready to give up, father. I don't want to let her go. I know, William. You've always been your mother's son. But there really isn't anything else left to try. We have to accept it. Cut. Cut. 
Please, not again today. That's a lot of pressure. Good evening, mother. My son. Is that you? Raphael? Who's Raphael? Yes, mother. I'm so glad to see you, my dear son. It's been so long. I'm happy you're home. How have you been feeling? Did Anna read you the books I brought for you? Little by little. You're always so considerate, Raphael. Are you going to stay with me all night again? I will stay by your side, but you should rest now. I came to wish you good night. You're not leaving, aren't you? No, of course not. I'll never leave you, mother. Ah, good. Good night then, my son. Your mother loves you dearly. Sleep well, mother. <laughs> Meeting new people isn't not is not rushing. You should really consider the Darcy's girl. She has your age, comes from a proper noble family. I've seen her once. She looks clever and poised. Oh, William, I just wish I was I were able to attend your wedding. To see you happy before I go. Is that you? Raphael? Raphael? Done. I must keep on pretending. In the end, it's just you and me. Purple Hyacinth, episode 68. Leave. What's wrong with them? Those are children. Don't bother. Nobody likes cops around here. It isn't like that in our precinct. Everything here is so different. Are you really that different though? What do you mean? I think you know what I mean. Think about it, officer. Maybe everyone who joined the APD really wanted to help people. But policing is protecting and serving through violence. Therefore, such behavior are not only taught, but encouraged and normalized. Your service protects the rich, rights of the rich while denied those same rights to the poor. So no matter whom you're policing, we're all contributing to this system of oppression. Exactly. So in the end, how different are you really? 
Therefore, balance is not only taught, but encouraged and normalized. When you have such dangerous members of the Phantom Scythe around, it's hard to remember not everyone is that extreme of a threat. Circus Royale, buy tickets. <laughs> Circus Royale? That's the one on Fleming's ticket. The troops started out in this neighborhood. Kim told me they live up to their name. But for such a high budget troop to have its roots in this strict like this, I knew conditions were bad, but I... I suppose I never paid enough attention. I never seen the side of the city. These streets are downright dreadful. I guess that's the problem of privilege. The more you have, the less attention you pay. Now try to guess how many f, f the royals and nobles have given in the past century for the South Shore to reach the state. Those kids, I could have been one of them. I was sent on a path that is much worse thanks to the Phantom Scythe, but now I have an apartment, nice clothes, and more money than I need. I guess some could say I'm on the lucky end of the spectrum. You and I both are. And that's all. It is. Luck. Speaking of the circus, we should probably look into it. Fleming's ticket is for February, but we should check it out before. Agreed. They set up in our present list here. I think they have a show in two or three days. That might be a good time. Mm. I've been meaning to ask you, how did you know about the print shop last time we came here? I found one of the Snapdragon's pamphlet in my attic of all places, and a card from the print shop with a disturbing handwritten note. The writer knew about the massacre, and I think my parents knew the writer, but I don't have anything else. Yesterday, when you said you felt it was important, you weren't only talking about the murder. Why so? I never heard of any revolutionary groups like the Snapdragon before, not even at the police academy. I've looked at the other precincts, archives too, nothing. It's like they never existed, that print shop too, and their claims are pretty close to the phantom sites. Murders don't make headlines in Grey Chapel. You think the two groups could be connected? I'm not sure of anything yet. Let's focus on the bombs for now. We still haven't found anything. We need to keep looking. Gotcha. I have so many things to tell you, Brett. Who's that? The Queen? Your Majesty. Dakin, you're letting your appearance down. I'm sorry, Your Majesty. Some mornings are rougher than others, I suppose. Where are you off to in such a hurry? I have, impor I have important matters to discuss with the King. Such as what, if I may ask? Problems you know very well we have ignored for too long. As the rulers of this country, you can't turn a blind eye to your people's frustration forever. Something has to change before the situation spirals out of control again. You can't compare Philip's rule to his father's. Things have changed. Yet the situation on the South Shore is worse than ever. With the new year coming up, is a good time to bring reforms if we... Why waste time? We've already given so much to those good-for-nothings. All they do is ask for more without offering anything in return. Industry in the city relies on cheap labor from the South Shore. Families that can't afford to send their children to school or get the medical care they need, the idea of helping them has barely breached the government's closed mind. But it's not enough. 
How can we expect them to offer more to society if they're giving their all just to survive? True. The crown's coffers aren't bottomless. Neither is a people's patience. The Phantom Scythe ranks are growing by the day, Elizabeth. Our spy master keeps an eye on them, but that didn't stop the Allendale tragedy. We knew it was coming and still couldn't prevent it. How long before the history repeats itself? Because we were too proud to listen. Listen to what? Coercion? From a gang of criminals terrorizing Artelis? Murdering our most valuable citizens, destroying our economy? Are you naive enough to believe they could stop it if we comply? They will not stop if we don't do anything. We shouldn't even need their pressure to consider these reforms. But King Philip has to open his eyes before the Phantom Scythe shuts them forever. Is that a threat, Dakin? You said their supporters are multiplying. Are you considering joining? Of course not. I am only being rational. If any member of the Privy Council would actually set a foot in a Grey Chapel, they would agree with me. You may try to influence Philip, but the Council has not forgotten your old schemes. And they shouldn't forget they aren't dealing with the Snapdragon anymore. So he's the leader of Stop Dragon then. That's what I'm assuming. You made sure of that. Oh, this is tense. The king is waiting. Please excuse me. But of course, go. Dakin Rimsmell, Rimsmell's office. I know what you're up to. You can't run away from me. What is going on? So now we got something more intense and this is from like the Royals Up. Now it's starting to slowly make sense but not fully just yet but we see people bumping heads and it's kind of sad. Like I see what this whole revolution and all this war and all this everything that's happening is because they want the royals to care about the people who are not up there you know and speak for the poor but of course as you can see the nobles and the rich only care for themselves and that's really true that's that's unfair whoa this this story is getting really good all right guys if you guys enjoyed my webtoon reaction slash reading style feel free to subscribe leave a thumbs up drop some comments on how y'all feel about these two episodes and i'll catch you guys next time bye